September, oh, excuse me, October 18th, uh, Board of Finance uh, special meeting. Just since we have so many people here, let me tell you, let me tell you how this is going to flow. Um, the first two items on the agenda have to do with the Board of Education. Then, then there's a third item in the agenda, which is an executive session for the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance, which will take 10 minutes. We're going to leave the room, um, and then we'll come back. Um, we're going to go over to the uh, police station, uh, and then we'll be back and we'll discuss um, the proposed renovation and expansion of the uh, of the uh, town emergency services are kind of across the board. I just don't want anyone to wonder why we walk out after. But Steve, I think minutes. it's worth clarifying. This is a discussion. It's a tonight. discussion. There's no right. decision going to be made tonight. That's it's right. To manage people's expectations. Right? right. So that's what we're doing. Uh, Dr. McCursey and Rich, I'm sorry. And, and this is something that we do with the Board of Education on a uh, on a monthly basis. So uh, Andrew sent these out earlier, but it's going to be hard copy. Hard copy. Okay. Oh, which which document? Uh, the financial report. Um, I'm sorry, I don't think I got one. No, I definitely need a hard copy. What we wanted to do, and uh, you can do this monthly if you want, you, you're used to having Rich run through uh, the financial specifics. We also have Mike Rizzo here, who has uh, joined us in July as the Assistant Superintendent for PPS. Uh, he's been working hard to keep people informed of all the work that were on, was underway, given that was a major budget issue, remains a budget issue. I mentioned to Steve ahead of this meeting, willing us to have after Rich does his piece, Mike give you an update on types of things he's been working on, which I think on a narrative background, not dollars yet, but will give you as a board of finance some of the same understandings we've been giving the board of ed right out of the block since Mike's arrived. Right. This is the framework we're doing, but okay. Rich, one of you. Uh, so there's two financial reports. It's the, the unaudited year end financial report. Uh, we also included a reconciliation and special appropriation for special education that was given and in the current year. So to start with the, the uh, prior year, um, the reconciliation, uh, there was a special appropriation for uh, $1,061,852. Uh, we did spend all of it. We actually needed an additional $25,704. Uh, we were able to cover that through a variety of transfers. We did freeze all accounts uh, as of May 1st. Uh, so the items for special ed tuition, legal fees, and the special ed transportation costs uh, at the end of the year total $3,264,215. Um, for the year end, um, our budget <coughs> for the special appropriation was the $50,969,362. Uh, we did not have any encumbrances at the end of the year. Um, we did end up with a very tight margin of $12.22. Oh, where is it? With the $12. <laughs> <laughs> With the 35,000. So then for uh, the new year, um, we do have a budget of 51.4 million. Uh, we have spent 10.7 million with encumbrances of 37.7. Uh, we are anticipating about 2.8 million uh, with the year end balance, excluding uh, some special ed encumbrances of 197,000. Uh, we do have. Is that we're supposed to have a call in. Yeah. Uh, hey, Bob, are you there, Bob? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, great. Thank you. Just uh, we do have, I'm sorry, Rich. Are, can you, are you reading off of this still, or are you doing something entirely? Where's the can I have those sheets, too? Because we're not getting everything here. And just let us know when you're switching documents. Thanks. And another one. Thank you. Yeah, just, just yep. you know. Walk us through things because we don't we don't know what you're reading from. Sure. So the new uh, the new year financial document is through September. Uh, we have a budget of 51.4 million. Uh, we have spent 10.7 million. Uh, encumbrances of 37.7 million. Uh, new this year, we're showing a special ed encumbrance hold. So we had uh, tentatively some uh, parents who have uh, indicated that they're going to unilaterally place their students, um, but there is no definitive outcome of how that will look. If it does materialize, we're estimating that liability to be 343500 That means you'd be over the tuition budget. Correct. Um, so we have an anticipated expenditure rate of $2.8 million. 
So exclusive of those special ed encumbrance holds, we're trending positive of 197,000. But if those encumbrance holds uh, hold true, we're trending at a deficit of 145,000. Mm. Uh, the, services? The, the students that parents have chosen to have place on their own, does that ultimately get challenged, or how does that work? No. Yeah. Or, or, or. Yes, it can, it can be challenged. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm you know, glad to talk about that process if it's helpful to the group. No, I, I just, I just the process. If someone says, sure. well, I'm, I'm just going to do it anyway. Right. So, so. Um, and you're going to pay for it. Correct. What right. happens then? Uh, so uh, that's parents essentially exercising their due process safeguards, which are available to them through special education uh, rights. Uh, and then there's a process for coming to a resolution uh, that can involve mediation, resolution, and eventually a full hearing, if that's, what, if that's the way it goes. Um, there's vulnerability at every point financially, and there's going to make decisions based on program and um, you know, financial responsibilities as well. You, you're the new SPED consultant, right? Uh, the assistant superintendent for PPS. But also the... That, that, that was, is yes, yes, okay. Yes. Just want to make sure. Because yes. I wasn't introduced. What's your name? I'm sorry. Mike Rizzo. Mike, Mike Rizzo. Alan, Alan Grover. Yeah. Yeah. I may have missed an introduction. We don't have any more than our schools. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's right. fascinating room. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, nothing on internal so, services. Uh, since we're on the state partnership plan, we're not self-insured anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're premium based. So the health insurance claims don't hit the internal services fund. Well. But uh, if but you, you want to know how the year end uh, internal services fund? I sure do. Sure. If you go to the previous <coughs> financial report on page the actually the last page of the document, uh, we ended with a fund balance of 1.8 million dollars, or 27 just shy of 27 percent. Okay, yeah, I can get that sheet. When, when we went to That's the, what I was looking for. When we went to the partnership plan, we had I get a missing. I'm sorry. Is that this? Yeah. Oh, okay. This is, this is what I was talking about. But okay. so that's still one point eight million. And you still have trailing claims, I guess? So the majority of trailing claims did hit. Uh, we do have about, in the new year, there will be about twenty or $30,000 that have trickled in. Thank you. <coughs> so if you'd like, I mean, Mike's prepared to give you some overview here of the kind of things we've been doing. He's been doing in particular sort of look at this entire area. I think that could be quick. It'd be a background you get. Yeah, be helpful. Ed's had. Just, I think, as much as you're getting the narrative, the, if you will, the qualitative work, and for that big quantitative moment, and, and, project, and we'll do this as often as you like. <coughs> right, so um, as we just discussed, there's a significant investment in special education last year uh, in the 17 18 school year, as well as the 18 19 school year moving ahead. So uh, I appreciate that, and I'm going to just tell you a little bit about what we've done so far for the 18 19 school year. Uh, we did. Um, switch our legal counsel for special education. So I think that was a very strategic move for us. Um, it was an open RFQ process uh, that uh, through the Board of Education, uh, we did a thorough review of several applications uh, from uh, a few different uh, firms. Uh, we did make the switch. Uh, we're now represented by uh, Bertrand Moses um, with a uh, senior partner, Marsha Moses, doing uh, primarily a good amount of work here in West um, we've, we've discussed our strategies and. Uh, related to, to, uh, to um, new process matters with the Board of Education in executive session. Uh, it was a very productive discussion and I think um, highlighted some, some of our uh, strategies. Uh, I will tell you that uh, in my experience working with uh, Bertrand Moses, particularly with um, Attorney Moses, um, very, very strong preparation, uh, very strong analysis and advocacy for clients. So uh, I think it's a very good move for the district um, and for uh, our students, frankly. Uh, a, a second thing that um, uh, you know, we really addressed very uh, quickly is uh, the, uh, the communication between my office and, and Rich's office in the business office. So uh, Rich is a great guy, but he does not like surprises, and uh, blame him. So uh, we've really worked to, to improve that communication. Um, we meet monthly uh, uh, regarding uh, all of our uh, tuition and litigation matters. Uh, beyond that, there's a, I would say, daily, uh, many of the 
many things, possible things that you'll see on the, uh, some of the sheets that were handed out. That uh, the difference in uh, with and without the encumbrances for the uh, the current uh, projected balance for the 1819 school year reflects the conversations that we've been having. So uh, when I'm aware that something may be going on, I let Rich know. We plug in a number so we can plan accordingly. Uh, may, may or may not come to fruition. Uh, claims can go back as far as two years. Um, so something that happens now could be reflected two years from now going back. Um, so that's uh, but we can plan the best we can given the information we have at the moment. Um, we've also just looked at the, uh, the, uh, the way we've done our record keeping between us where we've uh, really um, consolidated that so it's very clear what we're working, the numbers we're working with um, and what's involved uh, for everybody. Uh, and then finally, it, it's, um, you know, this is a little bit more program based than it is um, finance based, but we've done a lot of professional development for our team, uh, leadership, teachers, related service providers. Uh, on best practices, building programs, IEP development, uh, really looking to build consistency, um, efficiency, and, and strong programs. I'll uh, be very clear that the uh, strength of the programs at Western are very good. Uh, we have extremely dedicated staff, um, and there is room for growth and, and a desire to grow uh, to make it even stronger. Um, essentially, by increasing the capacity, the hypothesis in my experience is that you um, provide more stability for our students, uh, for our staff, uh, financial stability, uh, for the district as a whole. So um, the, more you simply, the more you can do internally, the better you can do it, the less likely you are to have to deal with some of the uh, issues that come with outplacements uh, and litigation. So uh, that's where we are thus far. I'm glad to answer any questions. Can I have you with me with parents uh, since you've been here? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, first, uh, so as you may have known, Dr. McCurse started a roundtable forum last year uh, and ran three or four of those uh, prior to the end of the school year. Uh, we had our first uh, meeting uh, last week. Uh, we had about 25 parents in attendance. It was a very uh, positive meeting, productive. Um, at this point, we've tended to schedule six more of those meetings this year. Um, and some of the items we discussed at the last meeting were to uh, do some parent education, professional development, uh, you might say, for the parents. Uh, around some of the aspects of special education, just trying to open the doors and be as transparent uh, as we can with our processes and make them uh, equal partners in the process. Just um, remind, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Remind me, so the special supplement that we did was for 18 million. <laughs> right. right. And then in 19, did that supplement establish, was that supplement um, Mm -hmm. boosting the overall SPED allocation mm -hmm. for 19? Mm -hmm. So um, the supplement was for 18, and then right. we brought the budget forward. But you brought the budget to for that level. We brought it up. We had to bring okay. up the so, so, so with that said, um, the mm -hmm. current estimation is that you may be anywhere from, because because this is, you're still dealing with the 18 fiscal year in terms of the reconciliation year? You're in the 19. I'm talking, you're in 19. So this 145, 948 potential shortfall is for 19, based on where you are as of October now. Okay, I just wanted to be clear. So this was against the entirety of the SPED budget, including the increased level as a result of the 18 supplement, which is now our level in the 19 yep. budget. Okay, just want to get my head I'll together. I, may, I think the, I'm glad Steve agreed to Mike here, and if it's a monthly help to you, I think as we talked last year intensively, yeah. uh, it's, it was seven out of the last eight years, not this year, but that we were running behind. So we had some deeply rooted situations here that I think all of you knew we weren't going to get out of immediately. So there's some carryover here in terms of yeah. the, the implications. So I think the sort of programmatic pieces that Mike's sharing, the financial management pieces, the coordination <coughs> pieces, <coughs> only October since July when Mike started, we're right away trying to get after, really trying to sharpen this down. But in terms of <coughs> you know, bending that financial curve, use a phrase we used a lot last year, that will take a bit. Right, that was, that's part of Mr. Well, Rizzo's here. Yeah. New. Yeah. Yes, but I think that Task the aim is high quality service. But, it, but it's not, it doesn't happen in, a, in, a, in one fiscal year, right. I guess. And, <coughs> and I think as all of I heard you agreeing, it's about high quality services for all our students.
and then do mm -hmm. that as efficiently and effectively as we can. Yeah. We all understood that order. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I towns that reversed the order have frankly gotten themselves yeah. in some I, I think we agreed to it as, as an investment, that, but we may not see the results for a couple of years anyway. Right. Understood. It's, it's straight. I just wanted to make sure I was centered on what the, yeah. how the last supplement affected this year's budget. I just yeah, that's clear. Okay. I just just say um, one of the questions have could we be seeing a budget miss of the same magnitude this year as we saw last year? And I, you know, you're you're saying there's some risk, but I just want to. And things are unpredictable. As I recall, it was around this October meeting that you came and said, we've got an issue and, and sped an out of district tuition and indicated the approximate magnitude. So that gives me some comfort that we're not going to see the, the same thing, kind of the magnitude as we saw mm -hmm. last year. So. Well, the, the increase in this fiscal year sped budget should help should make that that's part of the part of the probably non a non issue I, I mean to be, to be honest though I'm a, it is interesting and I mean, it's not a criticism at all but it's just an observation it's interesting how a spike last year which was unexpected has become the new level this year and therefore the ex Expected level of expenditure seems to have permanently increased by a million bucks. Alan, but I'll just interject. That's you're looking at it from a budget perspective. If you look at, you can see that historical trend has increased 10 percent a year. And every year, what happened was we said this year was an anomaly. We're going to budget for a big decrease in out of district tuition, and that's what they that's what the district did last year. And instead of seeing a decrease, you saw the same kind of increase. And, and the gap was that special appropriation. So right. that, there was some spike, but it was more just the way the, the, the budget was set and historically set. Right. And this was a, so, so you're saying. This was a resetting to closer right, to reality. To take reality and therefore. Is, yeah. is what I no, no, I'm, I'm with you. So, so therefore, the, the likelihood of a, of, of a significant spike should be far, far less because you're at this new higher level. Well, <coughs> Yes. It, it, well, we from this level. If, if we had continued to grow, it would be up again because the number right. of unilateral placements has been growing pretty right. steadily. Right. And the last year was a big. big can, can you just explain one thing? When you talk about a unilateral placement, do you mean a placement where the parent makes a decision solely on its own, with no consultation with you guys in advance? as to whether to make this placement comes to you after the placement is made and says, I want this to be paid for, but there's no discussion or even a requirement for a discussion ahead of time? Uh, that's a pretty accurate statement. I wow, really? Right, so the, so the, the no, I'm saying not, not, even a, not even allowing well, a that's, discussion. That's, 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 that's remarkable. The, the, the way the, so if you challenge that, the burden of proof is on the... No, no forget, about, forget about whether it's a challenge. I'm simply asking why isn't there a requirement to at least have a consultation first before the right to have a placement? You can say that the parent has the right after the consultation, and then you have to challenge it if you wish. But how could you not have a requirement to simply have a consultation prior to a unilateral placement? That's crazy. So uh, there is a requirement under the. Do you? I mean, am I missing something? Yeah, Mike, yeah. Mike will explain. Yeah. It. Thank you, Michael. Please explain yeah, it. Mike will explain. I'm here to kind of escape the path. I understand. Walk right down. This, this was not. A, I was not trying to tee it up. I'm just shocked. No. So th there is a requirement that they, that uh, parents, if they intend to seek reimbursement from the district, that they provide 10 days' notice prior to that unilateral placement. However, if, even if they don't do that. Does not they do not forego their rights to uh, due process. And but notice isn't in the consultation. Uh, sure. Okay. So okay, I can send you a note right. saying I'm placing my child in a special situation, yeah. and I can then not pick up your call when you just call me to discuss it. That's true. And it has so, and and you and can't do squat about it. Right. So Alan, if I could be. Um, Parents have a right to place their child wherever they like when, when they want to make that, uh, when they make the choice. Families 
make choices for all kinds of reasons, and sure. I certainly respect that. Um, the, uh, where it becomes a board of education issue is when they then, then say, and board, you are responsible for this placement. Sure. So, so that, and they, there are uh, very clear rights and processes around that, pro that uh, request and uh, that, that's the process we engage in, and there is a, um, you know, it, it can come quickly and very, you know, can, can be unknown uh, mm -hmm. until, until it happens. So um, even, you know, there are some that sometimes they happen, and you say, okay, you know, maybe I saw that coming a little bit, other times it's completely empty. So if, if one wanted to <coughs> impose a, do you think it would be useful to parents who were considering unilateral placement if there was a requirement that there at least be a period of consultation with the Board of Ed if they're intending for reimbursement for this, you know, out-of-district placement, that there at least be a consultation. Wouldn't that, like, educate the parent about what the, the district could do before the decision was made rather than have to have it be fought or discussed after the decision is made? Uh, th those, those meetings do take place in some cases, both formally and informally, um, through the special education process. Um, you know, Connecticut law and legislation, um, you know, we're, we're following that as well as the IDEA. Um, an interesting point about Connecticut, with, which uh, Gina just pointed out, is the burden of proof. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, Right. With that, that, that we've heard a lot about. Okay, so, we know so, about. That, so that, you know, that in, in, in some ways I've heard the argument that, you know, there's no, there's no, um, there's no harm in bringing a claim on a, on a part of it because you really, you, the, the burden is on the board. So why not bring that claim and ask? Um, so, and, you know, listen, parents' rights are their rights. Uh, those rights are there for a reason. I respect those rights. And, and we actually mm -hmm. take great pains to educate parents of their rights because that's what we're required to do. Um, but there, it, it can be difficult um, when the claims are made. Right. I, I would just think, and again, this is just, I, I don't want to spend the evening on this, so yeah. I'll, just, I'll just leave it 10 seconds more. Sure. I would think that if a parent was going to have the right to make a decision to put the, the child in placement without, and, and then ask the Board of Ed to pay for it, that at bare minimum, a requirement of a pre-placement consultation so that the board could at least look at the situation and explain to the parent what the board <coughs> could do within the confines of a non-reimbursement situation before the parent made the decision to go outside. Not like you could stop it, but just there isn't even a requirement that they have a sit down to discuss it. I think that's crazy. But okay. So, so vote, vote, just, vote in November. Yeah. Just, just you know. Vote in November. Yeah, yeah exactly. We're, you know, we're operating within the statute. Yeah. So November, we're operating within the statutory structure and the federal structure. Yeah. So some of those points of frustration sit within that. We, I'm sorry. Fundamentally, we have to build the relationships. I think one reason Mike's being very polite is we have to build relationships with families. So yeah. ahead of that unilateral you know, moment, they say we have a relationship with the right. Western School such that yeah. we will go and have that conversation. Ahead of your level. Yeah. So that's why the things that I think you all heard that we're emphasizing now is high quality programming, yeah. consistency, clarity, right. holding to all of the elements that are there. Because if unilateral comes up that we don't agree with, if we have done our job, we're in a better place to then say, well, wait, we need to have a conversation. But if we can build relationships, it's more sure. likely to get what we want. But that's a relational right. structure, not yeah. legal yeah. structure. Right. I mean, Got okay. it. And that and that certainly was part of the investment because you hired some other uh, people with technical uh, expertise. Yes. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else? No. So let's move on to number two. Um, it's a discussion and a decision Thank you. Thank you. regarding a request by from the Board of Education to create a new capital account entitled BOE WIS and the Western High School Roof Maintenance and to transfer into said account $43,000 from the capital account entitled Board of Education Repair Knee Wall at the Intermediate School. Yeah. Taking I money from the Knee Wall? Oh my God. Unless you want them to go first. Okay. That's why we can do it. Board. All right, I'll take that. Uh, Dick, knee Wall is I, under I think budget. I understand what the proposal is. Uh, is the Knee Wall project at an end? Right. It's complete. So the money, how much money was remaining in that fund? Um, for 
that is correct. It's a little over fifty thousand dollars in that account. Okay, and conveniently, this is just under that. It's forty-three thousand, but uh, that money essentially now is in the capital reserve. Uh, it is yeah, I mean, or at some point that will get automatically moved into the capital reserve. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, right off the top, I'll just say I have I have a problem, a real problem, with item number two, um, and it's a process problem. It's the way the budget works. Uh, we had so we have satisfied the need that was requested in the capital budget beginning last December. And that's the way the capital budget works. You have to make a specific request not to exceed a specific amount. And it's just for that purpose. It goes through six different layers of approval, all of which, except the last one, the referendum, involves approval of each capital item specifically with the amount. The problem I have with get, trying to get money for these minor roof repairs by going into the capital budget this way is that it undermines, or well, certainly bypasses, the capital budget process, which is different entirely than operational budget process. It's voted on separately all the way along. Uh, this is not the way, I think, to get the money. To, and I, I've talked about this, I think it was a year and a half ago. I went, went through this and made clear, I don't think capital budgets can be used in this sort of way or used for other purposes other than what the town had agreed to. Uh, so I, I think you've got three, probably three better ways of doing this because I, I could never vote for something like this, ever trying to get into the capital reserve in this way. It's not part of the Board of Ed budget. It's not necessarily for a Board of Ed purpose. I think if you need it, and you, then why not go to the Capital Advisory Committee for the next year, for the 1920 capital budget, and ask for the 43,000 there, and see if that enters, it will get into that stream, which is where it belongs. If you really want to get this going right away, then your second choice is to come to the selectmen and this board for supplemental appropriation. And then you'd have to prove that you have the correct standards that deserves a supplemental appropriation. The third choice, I think the best choice, is that this is 43000 for what appears to be fairly minor maintenance on two roofs. You have a $51.5 million budget. You're only in the first quarter of fiscal year, or second quarter, I guess. Uh, I, I can't imagine with a budget that large you couldn't find the money yourselves if you needed it right now. So anyway, that's, that's my little thing. That's, that's where I am. I, I, can't, uh, I can't agree to this. No, Dick, I, I, mean, I hear you. I just want to, this is a good faith effort. And I, I think the chair can speak to that. I hear your points very well taken. I understand that. You know, this is not the first town, first capital budget situation such as I've been involved in. The deliberative process the Board of Ed went through looked at many of those same questions. And so I just want to be clear to the Board of Finance and town manager has been involved. This is a good faith effort. We're not trying to be uh, underhanded in any way. And indeed, there are other capital needs, but these are not minor roofing issues. The knee wall is a roof related issue. So we thought it was a reasonable, a reasonable request to do it this way. Now, you, know, you may disagree. That's your right. I understand. I just want to be clear that mm -hmm. it's truly a good faith move. There are other capital things that were not even considered because it would not be in any way aligning with the nature of this work, uh, the new wall work. Uh, so I just want to you know, be clear on that. Uh, we actually, despite what seems to be a large budget, it is highly encumbered. Uh, and we would not, at this point, be able to go in for that balance. So I, you listed as one of three options. We're also yeah. being highly cautious on supplementals. We do not plan to come back to, for supplementals except a, a very extreme situation um, or a vital situation. And uh, so This I, is, in effect, a supplemental. I just don't like the, 
the way it is done and the source of the funds. That's not what they were intended for. That's which which roof is it in relation to the new world roof? I wholeheartedly agree with Dick. Um, when I saw this, I thought, you know, the money in the capital budget for different projects isn't funded, and it's not fungible for a very specific reason. Because if you now a uh, an, an extra amount uh, left over in a particular project, it makes it extremely easy to spend that money if you consider those accounts funded. Now, I'm not suggesting for a minute that each one of these projects isn't necessary or that you've done that, but the reason the capital budget is set up that way is so you have a certain amount allocated, if you have extra amounts left over, it's returned back to the budget, and then if you have other projects, then you have to come before the board of selectmen and the board of finance and ask for supplementals for anything with a 10 grand. And that's the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be that way for the um, So I, I wholeheartedly agree with this. Uh, I also agree with this, this one point that considering that we are only into the first quarter, um, some of these items could be covered or, or should at least attempt to be covered in the current budget. Just asking the question, not changing anything Dick said, but the, the knee wall roof and this roof, are they diff what roofs are they relative to each other? <coughs> the, um, the cost for the repairs that we're talking about here for the intermediate school um, are costs that, that are appear throughout the entire roof. It's not one, any one section. Yeah. Um, the, we went to the, um, Jonathan helped us when we went and got the, uh, Part of the group covered under warranty. Uh, these are items that were not covered under warranty, mm -hmm. and they're they're spread out for the entire facility, uh, intermediate school facility. Where's the knee wall roof? Which roof is that? That is the uh, uh, by the gym, part of the gym, at the, the intermediate school. Yes, yeah, it's a wall. <laughs> it's a wall, but it's a roof. It's a it's a roof connected to a wall. Yeah, it's a, it's a, there was a gap. Yeah. That was the problem. It's a, yeah, it's a stand, yeah, there was a gap of the wall, the wall pulled out. Okay, but these roofs that we are discussing are not the same roof with well, a knee wall roof. One, one of them is. One of them is right. How many different roofs are there? Well, there's, 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 there's the width oh. with yeah. the yeah. intermediate yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you're, is, so you're saying that the roof that you're asking for the repairs on in the intermediate school is the same roof that you were asking for knee wall repairs. The roof in the high school is a different roof yeah, entirely. High school is, yeah. So, okay. so, so, so if, this, if there wasn't a surplus from the New York project, would you have come and asked for this? Yes, it would happen. Yeah. All right. When would you have done that? In this year. In what budget? This coming year. This coming, this coming. In fiscal 1920. 20. Right. Just out of okay. curiosity. Is, is this technically a capital project or is it repairs and maintenance? It's technically the, the cost of it is, is considered capital. Well, why? Well, I just mean, would they be allowed to, if they could cover this in their operating funds, would they be allowed to do this, or is it technically they have to come? for a special appropriation because it's technically a capital budget item. That's what I'm trying to They can do that with their operating they budget. Can? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, they always but I, I mean, I personally feel like when, uh, even though there's there's a risk of potentially over budgeting, if you don't get the, if you come in below budget on projects and you don't get the benefit from it, why in the world do you bother to come in below budget for projects? So I'm sympathetic when you come in fifty thousand dollars for the knee wall project, and something else comes up. That that's almost effective management to be able to doing that, and you can be the beneficiary of it. And if we can figure out how, personally, from my perspective, the way to deal with this process thing, you know, I I certainly credit if you came for a special appropriation for money, it, it would be a meaningful thing that you or fifty thousand dollars under for the knee wall project in terms of considering it. So if you cover this in your operating budget and then you have an issue because of it, certainly from my perspective, it's notable and, and should be recognized that there is $50,000 in savings in the knee wall project that should be a factor 
be considering a special appropriation or some other thing down the road if that's how this process ends up. No. Were well, these repairs? The, 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 uh, the, the intermediate school, the roof area, I guess, is about one third of the cost of this, about two thirds in the high school. About 15,000 And about 27, 28,000 the other. And the repairs on the intermediate school were not known to be necessary when you did the knee wall request? They were discovered. They were discovered there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, how would you like to proceed here? Um, I would just like to say that given all the constraints that we have all felt in trying to deal with the budget, process aside, Dick, I would just like to say this was a roofing capital project that was approved. And during that project, with the roofers up there, other areas of concern were identified mm -hmm. during that process, not in advance, mm -hmm. but it was identified during that process. We're trying to be conscious of the fact of not asking for supplementals, et cetera, et cetera. We're trying to make use of the savings to do a needed repair that was identified mm -hmm. during the project. We're not trying to... Not at the high school. Well, yes, in a, in a way it was, because the roofers were up there and they noticed the membrane or whatever, there were issues with the membrane, and so they started looking at that, and that's when they did the warranty repairs, and they said, well, we need to check the high school roof because it has the same material, and they did the warranty repairs mm -hmm. there. So it was a rolling issue that we were managing. And the, the whole thing started, uh, was actually sparked by the building committee members saying that this would be possible good use for the remaining money because it was mm -hmm. very similar. So yeah. they, they brought it to our attention and we're bringing it forward with the help of uh, John. Yeah. Jonathan, did you want to say something? Or? No, I don't know. Yeah. Has this gone I, to the board? Yeah, let me just underscore one thing. I mean, I, you know, you'll, you'll decide how you decide, but I want to be clear here that this was totally a good faith approach. It wasn't an attempt to frankly gain any kind of a to respect rate of the Board of Finance, respect the limits between capital budgets, operating budgets, respect all of that, generated savings, external experts, roofers working one place in the district said you've got roofing problems elsewhere, building plan yeah, identifies yeah. that, or you can now say, is there a way with this savings to address right. a need respectful of the capital budget process? I mean, you'll just have to respect that, but we're in a long game here. So I just want to know, that be this one or others, that this was a good faith move. It was a good faith. The area districts in well did not go through this recently to the tune of about $600,000. Their budget body found out about it, and that is now a serious problem. We are not working that way here. We are being as crystal clear on mm -hmm. every dollar as possible. And involving all the right people. You will decide how to decide. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone's suggesting. Yeah, I know. I just want to, I just would, yeah. you know, we're in a long game here. Yeah, this, this has come up before. Yeah, just, right? I just, just, you know, we'll be here with you on a lot of times. <coughs> so, so procedurally, around. Dick, what, what's your, your preference would be that. Well, first of all, Chris, have you approved this board of selection? Yeah, we approved it. And, and did yeah. this question come up? This, but we just did it right before the year meeting. No, did Dick's. Uh, we, we had similar discussion. I lean towards going ahead and doing. I understand the capital issues. This was identified. There. My problem is that this is roofing materials and their leaks and the roofs. And you can argue, oh, they should find that out of operating or somewhere else in mm -hmm. the budget. But again, yeah. Supplementals, we hit caps. We're hearing things with the special already. I'm concerned with, with roofs that that problems with roofs that you have in your own house. You tend to not put them off because it actually causes more and more damage. We saw that by putting off other capital things. I do understand because I'm a process person also that really this should go in. It was a, a chunk of it was from the existing examination of the thing. They could have bundled it in that, that the wisp part of it said, look, as long as you're doing this specific thing, you know, patch up some of these things. They're really trying to go with the full transparency, mm -hmm. you know. I understand, you know, mm -hmm. if, if your board takes the position that you know, we really want to follow process specifically, literally, and to the letter, and that's, that's fine, too. From my perspective, I thought that, that because the money came from savings, because of extremely uh, efficient management, that it would be reasonable to put it back in to make sure that the, the school has also assured me that there's going to be a process going forward where they're going to do ongoing examinations, so we're not going to hit these basically spikes up of cost because that hadn't been happening. So this is a result 
of, of, of that process not being in place. I've been assured, or at least informed, that that process will be happening in the future. For those reasons, I was willing to you know, go forward with it. So that's where I stand. I haven't changed my mind, Chris. I didn't change yeah. my mind two years ago and five years ago, uh, six years ago. Five. I got. I actually got caught, prior superintendent, when we went into that and to bail them out, and it was late in the year when the state pulled the rug out from under them and they weren't getting certain funds. I regretted that decision then. We should have handled it a different way, and I think some others did as well. We talked about it later, and if it keeps coming up, I don't like to cross these things over. They could be handled a different way. It may be a worthwhile project. I don't doubt that about roofs. They need maintenance at times. This is not a lot of money. But I think there's a principle involved, and I don't think it's worth violating. But you can make the motion, and so just, 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 just one vote. Just, just, That's all. Just, 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 just one question. Because I'm not going to vote in favor of that. It sets a bad precedent for making capital accounts fungible. And uh, I don't disagree that this was done in good faith. But setting that precedent, the next problem may not be done in good faith. And we do have to uh, realize savings when we come in under budget on certain projects. I, I wouldn't have a problem if, if um, you know, you return that money to, uh, to the general fund in one, but in one line item, general item, and then make uh, supplemental appropriations for the next line item. Um, that's just the way it should be done. Yep. So, just if we were to go to the files, if you were to say well, no tonight, and you put it into next year's capital budget, what is there a chance that the number could be greater than with the current number? It, it could get worse, and we have to deal with um, the leaks throughout the winter. But if they ask for a supplemental just, now, but just from a why, why can't but why, we, can we have a motion right now to have a special appropriation of yeah. $3,000 for this expenditure? I mean, the Board of Selectmen and, and, not and we all know that that, 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 that I don't think we can. The Board of Selectmen has to pass the special appropriation. Yeah, program. and right. it's not on our agenda, and we can't change the agenda okay. for a special But you can do it next month. I mean, it's not a long well, time. We're not looking to go next year. So just to make sure we're not kicking the can down the road and ending up, ending up with the same decision if I'm looking at Dick and Bob, who will Bob won't be here. Um, uh, so if, he, if the money's returned to the general account, they come back for the special appropriation for $43,000 at our next meeting, what are your feelings about that? Process-wise. Process-wise, I think at this stage, the fiscal year, I would hope that it, it would have to re, it would have to pass the standards of I think of any supplemental one it has to be a need a real need okay let's assume the roof maintenance is a real need <coughs> it must be significant relative to the size of that agency's budget in this case it is not so we'd have to I'd have to consider that the third thing is it must be unanticipated. If it's anticipated, it should be in your budget uh, and, and not come up as, as simply if this act of discovery. If you knew about it and the roof should be reviewed, then that would have to be considered too. So I don't know. I'd have to consider those three things. Those are the standards I'd use in any supplemental. Just a question. Anyone. Isn't there a general maintenance fund in your budget? that you build in every year a certain amount of money for general maintenance such that you can use that money for the odds and ends that come up like this? So there's 7000 in the budget for roofs. General How much? $7,000 for general roof maintenance. Uh-huh. Okay. Do you need that kind of spend a little A portion of it has. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to just comment on my colleague's uh, statement, which is this. I'd like you to go through the special process, but I am not in favor of making a bit a problem worse by putting you up to a standard that, while it may not be have been you know uh, uh, up to the level of a special appropriation, because you you have it the ability to find it in a larger budget, and maybe that's I think Dick's main issue. Um, 
but I don't want the roof problem to get worse. So the real question is kind of come back to this, which is you're got, you guys are coming here and you've been very consistent with this, which is there's no money for anything at all whatsoever, period, the end, in the Board of Education budget at $51 million, regardless of what the issue is. And, you know, we'll go back to the 35 k I've been busting everybody about. We'll go to this as well. You're basically, you, 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 you're, that's your position. You're sticking to it. There is nothing that you can do. There is not a dollar for you to find. And therefore, you need to make this either a transfer from this excess money from this one piece of capital, or you have to come back for a supplemental. And for you, the definition of significant in a supplemental, as Dick was putting it, is anything is, is significant. Five grand is significant. Fifty cents is significant because your budget's that tight. So the whole idea of significance in a supplemental has gone out the window. Because every single friggin' dollar is significant to you. Is that what you're saying? I just want to be clear. We run our operation with great efficiency. Okay. And we have great staff. And right. Uh, okay. Many of our resources right. and personnel, majority right. are locked into contracts and obligations that should be there. The wild card for us is health. And yeah, and that's, <coughs> and that's right. Uh, all all I'm saying to you is that so the, 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 the definitional fact yeah, so that he just put out there for you no, I, no, I, is no, a different issue. No, I'll put it a little different way and try and protect the taxpayers of Weston. Yeah. I'm trying to protect the taxpayers of Weston. We are being fooled with every dollar that's coming. Sure. So we turn from 43000 within, given the last seven, eight years of, of six figure overruns, without laying off staff, mm -hmm. without cutting back programs, and keeping okay. increases to an incredibly low level. That's why we manage this as tightly as we do. Okay. So it's for the spirit okay it, my, my my personal view is that if you're going to come back here in a month and we're going to have a discussion that we about the significance of your supplemental request in the context of the greater budget and have a fight over something you've already said you can't do anything about then this whole thing seems stupid to me just move the move the money because otherwise we're just going to be wasting more of the board's time next next month I'll just say that I've, I've spoken about self-funding special appropriations and uh, even though the capital count is different from the operating account, when somebody comes with a $44,000 special appropriation that they funded by saving more than $50,000 on a capital project, that's sufficient self-funding in my mind to approve the special appropriation. The reason why... I understand the issue about it, but I'm just, yeah, that's the way I look at it. So. I, and I, I would like to look at it that way in most circles things would but we've we've already had that issue raised in the last month and I wrote an email response to that uh, there's an expectation that our people will behave professionally will act with the greatest efficiency in their decisions on all fiscal <coughs> matters and uh, it's it's uh, it's assumed uh, I, I don't and I'm, I'm sometimes there are people who are more creative than others in finding those things uh, we did have a finance manager who got very creative on things like uh, transportation and uh, energy, and, and it worked out very well for the for the town overall. But there there has to be some <coughs> assumption that you, you will choose your vendors and, and make those decisions uh, in in the best interests of the town. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. So. Sounds like we, need, we don't need a presentation on this. Um, so uh, item number two is a decision regarding a request by the Board of Education to create a new capital account. <coughs> I'm sorry. Entitled Board of Education Wisson. Wisson High School with maintenance and to transfer into said account $43,000 from the capital account entitled Board of Education regarding <coughs> New Wall Wiss. All those in favor? Is there a motion? We have oh, a motion and a second. We need a, uh, I need a second for that. That's your motion. That's Are you making a motion? No, that is the motion. I'm sorry. Um, He's making I'm a motion. Sure. Okay. We need to make a decision on this, right? right. Or, or do we want to take but, Well, what's the sense of the board besides, I mean, well, I understand well, well, right. I heard Dick's sense really clearly. And Bob's. But I think Steve wants to wants to get the question moved, yeah, and he is, he is, he's made the motion. I think it's 
and second it. Okay. So now it's on the well, table. Well, I'm sympathetic to Dick's point of view on process, but I'm, I'm willing to support the expenditure if it comes back in a form that doesn't interfere with the capital budget process. So. Well, then you're in favor of tabling this? Yes. Or tabling it or, or rejecting the motion, come back as a special appropriation. Okay. Right. Th that's your tr that's what you'd like to say? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I'll agree with, with uh, okay. you on that as well. I mean, but I'll just say that, that so, so there's no misunderstanding. If you come back next month, I'm not, and we see that this has to be done, um, you know, I'm not going to have a conversation about the significance uh, of you finding this money because we've got other issues where you need to find some money. And I'm not going to have this for this one because this is a, a, a repair that's got to be done. I, I just wanted to say that um, time is a little bit <coughs> of the essence in this yes. in the sense that um, approved tonight, we can have work going hopefully before the snow season starts. If we delay approval on the situation another month, we could be in a situation where we may not be able to get the repairs done before we get the winter. How many weeks is the repairs? Well, I'm not sure yet. Roughly? <laughs> Be roughly around three, four weeks. So, I, again, this was discovered and found the money. I apologize that the request is on here. It's transferring. We were advised to request a transfer versus a special appropriation. I, I we would like to get the roofs repaired so we don't have continued issues. Uh, I'm not going to counter Dick's uh, opinion. If Dick will let it be done, I'll let it be done. I, I can go either way. So I've already said. He's, he said his piece. I'm not going to. Said my piece. I'm not going to yeah. fight him on yeah. his process. Yeah, so I, I, I don't he's been here a lot longer is, than I have on this one. This is not their found money to use. <coughs> capital reserve. Okay, then I'll, I'm going to have to go with 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 you know with Dick's view on this. Okay, so I I. I uh, Made a motion. Is there a second? Apparently not. Right. Oh, we're unseconded. Right. Okay. Okay. But but it's it has to be voted on. It right? has to be voted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, all those so, in favor? So. All those opposed? No. 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 Okay. So, so mm -hmm. I'm asking you to come back next month for a special appropriation, and the money to be transferred into the general account. Right. Okay. Right. I'm just, I'm not, I'm just saying that's where it's going to come from, right? Well, hey, the, the excess comes 50 from the general grand. fund, but no, no. The no, money's not going to be transferred to the end of the fiscal year. Well, right, right. Uh, no, 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 no. It, it's going to be in the capital reserve until it, then, then it's. Capital closeouts, right. We need to bring that next month. Well, we do that. Well, you, that, that's, a, that's an accounting matter. I leave that up to you. But, uh. Uh, if not, not, so just not this way. Not, okay. not this way. The decision, not, the decision the effectively budget. is that okay. the money that you save is going back into the general fund. That's the decision in Capital reserve account. Capital reserve account. Capital reserve. Sorry. Capital reserve. Sorry, but it's not going for this project, and we need another process to get money allocated for this project. How you choose to do that is up to you guys. Yeah. I, 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 I understand the moral <laughs> hazard of doing it the way we're doing it. And I, I, if it were like a dire emergency, got, got, something else. We, we have other things to do. So yeah, we, let's go. We are talk about this. Okay, item number three. We're going to go into executive session for Bob for ten or fifteen minutes. To take a walk over to the uh, police facility. <coughs> Bob, should I bring the speakerphone with us? That's a joke. I'm sorry. Yeah, we can FaceTime you, Bob. We'll just walk over there.
You what? No, I, he, I, he asked me to text him when we. I don't know how this works. Bob, are you there? Bob, are you there? Bob, are you there? Okay, great, thanks. All right. Three of us here. We need one more. Um, the dick's just an inventor. Okay, well, actually, we, we actually, this is fine. Can I, again? Can, I have a can I have a motion to go back in public session? Go out of I move session? to go back into public session. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Aye. Chris? Oh, you want to do that quickly? Well, how much is the... Uh, well, let's, let's do it quickly. Yeah, sure. Um, the bond refunding resolution? Yeah, the bond refunding resolution. The Board of Selectmen uh, approved that a couple weeks ago. Um, and uh, typically when we do a refunding, we also have the Board of Finance approve a brief resolution prepared by uh, Bond Council as part of the process as well, even though it actually is, is not formally required. <laughs> I will say that we did get an updated iteration and uh, the savings are down somewhat. Right. It's mostly due to the 10 year treasury moving up maybe <laughs> 20 basis points. And so that's uh, kind of And how much that. is it down? We lost about 80,000 in present value savings since the, of the, since the run. Leaving us where? In the two. Uh, yeah, hang on a second. Yeah, 207. And, and, and what's the timing of the offer? Well, we had originally put in for pricing date in November 1. Yeah. Uh, our FA did not bother scheduling a rating agency call because he saw the market moving away. If we did that and we had a review, a rating, and once a committee we didn't incur that cost, so he held off on that. So mm. we are going ahead with other steps. The official statement is being put together. End of November now? Hopefully. I mean, we're, we're, we're tracking the market hmm. pretty much every day. So, you know, as soon as we see things turning. Well, it may not turn. It may only get worse. It may not. Yeah. So, uh, we need to have another conversation. Federal Act again in December. Uh, right. To see what would be appropriate. I mean, there's a shot it could become a push at some point. That's right. Okay. We're close to so, it. But we want to get in. Uh, in as much as we can so we can move forward. Well, what would be, let's assume we get to the point and they decide not to do it. What, what's our sunk cost? Um, bond Council, um, our financial advisor would not Doesn't get paid, us right? Um, it's, it would really predominantly be a portion of the total of what the Bond Council would charge. So it's, uh, some percentage of that. Thousand would be my best okay. estimate. So, so, do we need a? Yeah. Do we need a motion? Is there a motion? Yeah, motion to approve the resolution. Okay. Recommend yes. the Are there any questions here? Or? Yeah, okay. So, a motion to approve the bond refunding resolution. Second. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Yeah. Should we just mention what the amounts are? I mean, it's sort of material. Well, we won't know. We won't know. Well, yes, but we're being, we're, 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 In principle we're asking for a principal amount not to exceed $20 million for the purpose of refunding yeah. prior to maturity, well, you know, all of these. And, and I'm just saying we're authorizing a up to $20 million refund. So I just want to make sure that that's stated. That's all. Okay. Jonathan, you put that in the minutes. Yeah, I'm doing the minutes. Okay. Right. And the stipulation is if the town achieves debt service savings by such action. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. making. Okay. Uh, item number yeah. six is a uh, dis discussion and decision 
regarding fiscal year 17, 18 year end line item transfers. Okay. Um, so this is a, a typical um, action that we bring to the Board of Finance each year. It's basically to close out um, the, the line item accounts within the department budgets. Um, I'm going to refer to this top summary sheet, which is kind of by category, and that really kind of tells a story of where, uh, how we ended up this year. Under general government, we had um, large surpluses in health insurance and also uh, health insurance and, well, that was the main one. Um, well, we also had uh, um, you know, some, a couple of vacancies throughout the year. So we, so we ended up with over 260000 there. Under public safety, a little over 100000 That was mainly uh, in police it's overtime over and, um, and their regular wage account. Uh, public work, sanitation, and health, we were over there mainly due to um, uh, road paving. <clears throat> going over and also the solid waste transfer station which we had discussed during the year and we we increased that budget for the year that we're in now to uh, to recognize that we uh, mm -hmm. aren't hitting those revenues and so forth uh, human resources and development you can see uh, surplus there that's mainly due to the youth services director position being vacant over the course of the year um, and uh, the bottom line is uh, three hundred forty seven thousand um, dollars we underspended compared to the revised budget the revised budget would have reflected supplemental appropriations that were already approved during the year so all in all, this was a very favorable year for us due to um, you know, these few areas that I mentioned. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to highlight one because I think it's the first time in my life it's ever happened. And I remember when this department was founded, we are 76000 lower than budget on overtime. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. So the motion to approve the transfers and okay. recognize two hundred forty-seven thousand dollars, which would yep. end up in the mm -hmm. town general fund. So, a motion to approve uh, 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 fiscal year two thousand seventeen eighteen year end line transfers uh, total three hundred forty-seven thousand one hundred sixty-five dollars. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. I guess that's it. See you guys. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick, Rick, before yeah. we move to the back to the renovation, sure. just one question on the refunding: Do we stay within the same maturities if we refund? Yes, we do. Yeah, we yeah. did not extend uh, our okay. our bonds. Yeah, okay, yeah. I just want to make sure there was no. It'll still be done by twenty four. Okay, right. I just. Wonder. So item number that's it. Great. So item number four is a discussion regarding the use of town unassigned fund balance towards the police. Renovation, fire station number one renovation and expansion and replacement in the town's emergency response communication system. We just had a procedural issue where we have a joint meeting and I was trying to figure out whether we should adjourn this one because our one of our items is the same as yours, there's an overlap. So basically this discussion, whether it happened in a joint or not, but just, I wanted to know if we had to cancel our meeting. You're welcome to stay as members of the board of selectmen. <laughs> Appreciate that. You sure? Cause <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Plus we're not making a decision, so, right. so we're, again, just, we're just getting together to talk. Right, I'm giving the big picture here. I wanted to make sure, because they're new boards, this is the board on. Uh, we looked in the minutes, there was the first mention of, of facilities was way back, the most recent one we tagged was 2014 on up. Uh, these facilities have been an issue. Um, let me just go through basically what we're asking for. We're trying to bundle everything together. I'll talk about some of the reasons briefly about why we want to bundle, where there's synergies, why it makes sense. 
So basically what we're coming forward to ask for is for the town to consider because it's eventually going to have to go to a special town meeting. It's not a supplemental. This will be not a mill rate hit except for loss of interest on the, on the investments once we do it. But this is actually coming out of the undesignated reserve fund, the undesignated account that we've been socking away money. Currently that account stands close to 19%. We need something like 10 or 11% for AAA if you want to be You said 13 in the memo yeah. we got. Yeah, historically I was going to say. So historically it's been about 10, 11%. Now we probably want to keep around 13% because of the dislocations, because of what was happening with different towns when, when you know, there's potentials for state pushbacks and cuts coming that, you know, some towns, you know, might be playing fast and loose and paying stuff back. So Moody's, my understanding, the other rating agencies like to see something around 13 to 14. So with that in mind, that's the package we were conceptualizing. We didn't back out from there, but we looked at what we could do within that. So let me talk about the broad areas we're looking at. One is replacing the fire department roof. We've been talking about that for a while. It leaks. We've been putting money aside for that. We were going to do that as a separate project, but right now it makes sense to bundle that in. And part of the reason it makes sense to bundle in this in, bundle it in, is we're talking about including that as a separate project, four different construction projects. It makes sense to have a, uh, the same construction managers, you know, some of the vendors, some of the, the people doing the work. It makes sense to to overlap those. Um, replacement of Sorry, your expansion and renovation. What are you expanding in the fire station? Well, let me get to that. So oh, going through the list here. Sorry, I thought that was that part. No, of the list. no. So replacing the fire department the roof. So we've been talking about the roof. Yes. Now we've got a new piece in there. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Two replacement of emergency response communication system. That has been on the board for many years. We actually have actually socked away about a quarter of a million dollars because it was on in play last year. I think we did a hundred and something. <clears throat> I don't remember what it was. Did we do it last? We, we, we stopped uh, last year, but in the past, things. Yeah, but it, in any event, we've known about it so long, we've known it was a, 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 a big price tag, and we've, we put away a quarter of a million dollars because we knew that was coming up. Obviously, that's not going to cover the whole thing, but we'll get into the numbers. Expansion and renovation of the police department. Renovation of town dispatch center and uh, creation of uh, bunk and office space for EMS. So, these are a bunch of different projects that we, we need, we've been anticipating, uh, we've been socking away money for. Uh, it, it kind of, some of this came to a head this winter when we had some, some breakdowns in, in, in our emergency response uh, setup that, that made it clear. We have some known liabilities in the police department that we've known about for a while. Uh, if, as you recall, there was an iteration, and, and Brian Humes will talk, touch on this a little bit, from an initial decision to basically create a freestanding public safety center that was uh, anticipated to cost somewhere about 12 plus million to a, a, a version that we actually worked on for about a year and a half, two years, that we uh, a, a lot of stakeholders signed off last year. That one was stock cost was looking at about 5.6 million. Right now, for, for that piece of, uh, of the rehabilitation that we're looking at, we're talking about, and I'll give you the specific numbers, for the police department renovation and expansion, we're looking at 589,000, and we did some walking around just now, and, and Brian is right. going into some detail. I'm only going to be very top, top, uh, a summary on this because Brian needs to go in detail. We've got people who go into detail about the the, the uh, radio projects, uh, expansion and minor renovation renovation of fire station one, which now includes the roof replacement. So remember, we're talking about roof replacement. That's now folded into the project. The reason that's been accelerated up here to take care of, we were always consider, considering doing it when we were talking about a police station rehab. But right now, luckily, there's been a donor who's come up who's been willing to put in uh, $500,000 towards this project. And uh, EMS, Fire and EMS, have also agreed to a substantial contribution, about $250,000. That will be construction on town property that they are willing to do. And if for some reason, a volunteer fire and EMS go away, the town still owns that property. So that's that's a pretty good deal overall. But that five hundred thousand dollars is it reflected here? That's reflected in the next page. Yeah, five hundred plus two fifty. Seven fifty on the next page. Okay. Town hall improvements, which which are necessary because, as we just discovered downstairs, some of the police department expansion is going to eat away some uh, current functioning uh, town hall space, <coughs> and we're going to need to replace that space as well as making it ADA American Disability Act compliant which means we're going to have to create a way to get downstairs for people who, who, who 
who have trouble traversing stairs, that's going to require a chair lift to put in there. Replacement of town emergency response communication system. This is again, uh, I talked about stock, socking away money. Um, this is a rather extensive rebuild. Right now, my understanding is, is, is some of the systems are being serviced by going on eBay to find spare parts. Uh, all the systems are basically nearing end of life. We knew this was coming up. We're just anticipating doing it now, but if we go out to ask the town, we might as well do it, especially because we're planning on doing some rehab. Professor, Professor, in the previous master plan, you mentioned the 5.6 million. It didn't include the communications piece, That's right? That's correct, but we always anticipated spending it out, out of, out of uh, reserve for that. So if you recall, I don't know if you're following, but Tom Landry had always been referencing that when we do this, whatever eventual mm -hmm. rehab we're going to do on the police station, we would, you know, pull in the, the uh, communication equipment. The benefit of communication equipment now is that it actually doesn't have to be in dispatch. The vast majority of it actually is going to end up in the tower room, which is that building behind it, which is, it's got some, some benefits to that. That said, there are some aspects of the communication uh, equipment upgrade that require sort of physical furniture structures, and that's why the final line here, dispatch center improvements, is 620000 a, a portion of that is for the roof repair. The roof was leaking on electronic equipment, has been continually leaking, it has to be redone. Um, there are consoles on the left, Brian, again, go into some of the detail, but this is a far cry from what we have to do to rebuild the whole thing. Uh, also, one, not, I just want to mention something with that $5 million project that you mentioned in the, in the, uh, for the police project. It wouldn't, that wouldn't include any of the regular work and it wouldn't include the uh, fire work. The, the fire roof is always a separate piece. The final piece is uh, replacing the school emergency response communication system. The reason for that is their system, again, is very outdated and it's not at all interoperable with ours. Um, they need to do that. We decided that it would be a good idea to bundle this in with this ask, number one, because we're going to town to, to ask for, for, for withdrawal from the reserve fund. Second, there are some synergies in pairing the project and asking for it in bulk. So that there, there's some uh, scale qualities that make it uh, more cost efficient to do it that way. So given what we have socked away and what, what we're getting from alternative funds, the, the remainder and, and the number, I don't know if you have the updated numbers, but it's uh, about 3.9 something million. Yeah, yeah, we may be able to knock down the um, school emergency response communication system down a little bit. They're also going to, uh, as I understand it, um, look into submitting the documents to the state versus school security grant reimbursement, which we could get like 20% approximately back. So that, that, yeah, that is that an would be important. 100,000. So that is an, yeah, that is an avert in the hand of a 405,000, but that's just one of the So, So let me just go talk about some meta issues about why I'm asking for this, why we're asking for this now, why we're asking for this in the way we're asking. One is, again, we had some systemic failures this winter that, that really illuminated something, a key need that we can't keep kicking this town down the, the uh, can down the roof of the town. Two, um, this is an ongoing discussion we've been having. It's not optimal to be keeping 19% in reserves. We had a problem where Ben Barnes at OPM was asking us, uh, you know, last mm -hmm. year about what our reserve balance was. There were some rumors that they were going to use that to, to decide what our ability to pay was or perhaps what they could claw back with some pension put, put, pushbacks. We need to, at minimum, have these funds designated. The other thing is it, it compromises us in terms of negotiations. Our ability to pay is one of the factors that factors into negotiations with all of our bargaining units, and again, having 19% in there, which is, I think, the highest proportion in the state. Am I wrong, Jonathan? Uh, it's up there. It's, it's, up, it's, it's an it's enormous number. Um, so it's not a good idea to have it in there. So, I mean, we've been talking about, you know, bringing it down, you know, an ideal way to bring it down is to put it into physical infrastructure that we know needs to be done, and, you know, you saw that, Brian, we'll talk about some of the reasons why we need to do that. Um, and again, there, there are going to be synergies. Um, you know, the EMS part is probably going to move forward in any event. So having, you know, a, 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 a combined construction manager, you know, running all these projects simultaneously because we're going to have work there, work there, and maybe some work over there. We'll get into that sometime later in the year. But uh, it makes sense to uh, 
have a, a central person running it. Like, for example, if you got AC guys coming in, if you can somehow schedule, you know, the, the uh, construction and sequence it properly, you know, you're going to have savings. So I'm not guaranteeing that, but, but conceptually you can understand why if you're doing two projects, having it done. So those are, those are kind of the why now and why this is all bundled together. So we know we had the facilities problems. We've been talking about fixing it. This is, again, we started out with a 12 plus million dollar freestanding facility. We went to a 5.6 or ish with, with soft cost plan. This is a part of the plan that everybody, all the stakeholders already signed off on that for that portion of the plan, we're getting done for uh, combined about 1.2. If you combine the, the, the uh, public, uh, the communications upgrade and the police upgrade. The, the fire EMS was never anticipated in that overall package that we've been talking about. But right now we're getting that basically at half price. So for those reasons, I thought it would be good to bundle it together. The communications equipment, again, police is, is near an end of life. Town fire EMS is nearing end of life. Board of Ed is nearing end of life or at the end of life. They're not going to be all the same systems, but they're now going to be all interoperable with a system. And I'll let the people who are, who are putting forward, you know, the exact specs talk about it. But this is a system that's a system that's in use in every other town in our area. We are unique. We are an island in, in the setup we have. And, you know, it, it is a little bit nerve wracking knowing that, you know, we're sort of going our own way with something as critical as, as, as communication from drugs. What? Have, if, what? If you're Sorry. Client, um, what? If you're so inclined, you do have a brief presentation that was included in your packet just to talk about the iterations of the police project and uh, how we got to work with uh, 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 Yeah, over what period of time would, if this was approved, I don't know, in three months after town meeting and everything, over what period of time would it take to do everything you're discussing? Year and a half. Year and a half. Year and a half. And when would you start? It would depend when you are comfortable, when the town is comfortable. We still have to finish specking some stuff out. We'd have to go out to bid. Um, we'd have to schedule we'd probably if we, at uh, earliest, spring. Mm. It'd be a late spring bid. It would start construction right. next summer and run through to 2020. Okay. Just a. Uh, I think it's actually pretty impressive where you've gotten kind of the police numbers down from the numbers that that were talked about before. When I've looked at the town overall, we all know that in 2022-23, we're paying off the debt, and we get a great deal more financial flexibility at that time. And we face a lot of uncertainties now with the state, with a revaluation that's happening, other things, and we've known that there's a lot of things on the list that need to get done and I don't question that all these things have to get done but for a while the feeling was let's try to get closer to that date when we go and have that financial flexibility before we start taking on big capital commitments to be able to manage these risks and I say that because I just want to make a couple points about this because clearly this is you know we're spending our our excess surplus it's a you know, we were talking about a $40,000 decision before. This is $4 million, and it's an irreversible decision. It's, it's not like we can decide, oh, we need to reestablish that surplus the next year. It's, it is, you know, well, this is to some extent an irreversible decision. And, and I say all that because it, it speaks to the level of diligence that we have to look at some things. And, and I want to talk about two of them just to begin with, which is, and I don't see this, and this is something that I think anybody on this board should ask for, and certainly I would ask for, which is number one, uh, I want to see the balance sheet at the end of last fiscal year. I want to see the, 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 the adjustments that we expect are going to happen for the projected end of the year balance sheet for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, including the special appropriations we've done, what we know are other variances. We got money from the state. We got some good guys sure. to include in there. So we All can see, and then we want to see what the pro forma impact of this is on the balance sheet as of next, the end of this coming fiscal year. Yeah. And I think that's something that, that is essential to be able to have agreement on to understand what we're looking at, number one. Number two is the issue on, on our financial rating. And here, you know, I'll have discussion about this. I've heard 10%, I've heard 
But again, uh, if we think it's critical for us to preserve our tri AAA rating and be able to make sure that we understand the impact of that, uh, I would strongly urge us to hear from an expert, you know, in person about looking at that pro forma balance sheet and other aspects of the town. You tell us how the rating agencies are going to view our town's balance sheet in light of this so we can get reassurance about the impact of our rating before before we this do that. This keeps it at 13.6%. So just, just okay. to be, after the drawdown, we're at 13.6%. Right. Yeah, I know. Which, no other town which, if, which if 13% is the margin, you know, 0.6% is $300,000 roughly. Yeah. So, uh, so may, may, may I just no ask, problem. isn't our town AAA credit rating yeah. tied principally to our ability to bond? It's a whole bunch of factors go into it, so it's not not even this this factor is. Yeah, I'm not sure whether this this is not the determinative factor. Even there's there's a number of other things we have going for us also right. in terms of that. But I I wonder whether we should hear that specifically. Okay, it can be as low as eight, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean it can right. be as low as eight. And it can be and you know you should think eight okay. to twelve, but. Your point is a good point. It is a good point. We should we should get that data. And if, that. Do we think that said? I will give you some update that we are doing really well this year already. Yeah. Do, so, do do we? Think yeah, I know, I know we are. So and that's why I want to see it as of what right, our but, projections but again, are at the end of this year. These are the critical year. infrastructure yeah. needs that if we don't do now, we're getting three to four to five percent escalation, not in count, not including what's going on with tariffs and what that's doing to construction costs. And we don't know where that's going to end up. So it's not like this is not an opportunity cost to not yeah. get this done. This gets expensive. If we had done this two years ago, it, we would have done it much right. cheaper. Can you lock it in quickly? We can't lock it in without nobody's going to no, no, pay it. I know, months. I know, I know. But like, if we get this approved, we, we get it moving as fit. we we just need posting time. I understand. At the, at the I'm just asking. I'm just asking questions. We can move as quickly as we want. I mean, the, 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 the school bonds come off our. 23-24. And That's so basically we're talking about a four-year period where we hope that like no crazy stuff yeah, happens yeah. From, from Hartford. Right, from, from that perspective, but I'm also worried about crazy stuff to happen. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, so there's downsides to waiting. The EMS now, is going to move because that donor is not going to wait. Right, so that's not right. going to happen anyway. You, you, <laughs> you'll recall, and I'm, I'm only just bringing this mm -hmm. up for just to refresh the nightmare for a moment, that we were talking about a, a, a two to three million dollar raid on our treasury by the state, which was intended to deal with their surplus. And we, we as the Board of Finance, were saying, gee, if that happened, we'd probably, rather than tax the town wholly for it, we'd probably dig into our general fund. Our, yeah. No, 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 go, go slow, go slow. I don't see that happening. I don't I think it, under any circumstance it's going to happen. So, so, so if we okay, it didn't happen, and we're not going to improve. All right. No, we we got to realize we we are losing we are losing our, our. I can't hear him. We really should be talking about this project. We have people here who want to answer some technical yes, things. Yes, so that's what we can discuss. I, okay, all that because fine. talking about the twenty three twenty four year, I don't I don't want to talk I'm about the terms. Yeah. Oh, but just, I agree. just let me finish something. I've, I've heard these these opinions at, because there are there's another thing you can do. This town has been waiting to go off that cliff to see a significant reduction in taxes across the board for everyone, and I think it would it would make it would, that would also have an extremely salutary impact on a lot of things that go on in this town in the real estate market and other things. I want to say that before we start thinking, let's not spend until we get there, and we can wait for that. And now, let's not spend that money yet. Maybe we ought to give it back. We ought to think about that five years from now. The town can make that decision. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I agree that that would be wonderful to so, do. However, this public safety concern is not going to go away. That's not going to go away. I know it, and that's why I'd like to go ahead and let's talk about that. Let's so, talk about the, yeah. the details here. All the options on the table. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting, it's yeah, getting but, on. But I want to be clear about this because, uh, you know, without these building blocks, I don't know how we can reach a determination yeah. until we see these building blocks. I don't know how we can. Yeah. And I just want to set this out because we're going to have to agree to something about a process to reach a decision on this. Oh, getting, getting the data uh, yes. for, for the end of this year. That's absolutely fine, of course. Yeah. 
I'm, I was talking about the 23, 24 mention. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, I just want to add one other thing I just want to introduce on this. Or maybe we can talk about, I don't know what we want to accomplish tonight versus later, but the other question I have is timing on this decision versus the budget setting process for next year. It's, so, gonna, it's gonna depend on, first of all, your level of comfort, the, the decision, you guys technically don't have to make a decision, this has to go to a special town meeting and that's, yeah. that's, that's the group we're actually inside. So, yeah, but you I, want I, the I board support. Of course I do, but, it's, uh, it's, but I'm, saying, I'm saying you guys can give this or you don't have to right. do an official vote because the no, way no, this no, has no, to okay. happen is, is with a special town meeting is gonna have to make this right. decision in the end. But the, the question is, should we have the townspeople vote on this at the same time or a big gap compared to next year's budget and the question is whether or not they vote in one way and then find out a surprise compared to what the expectation was one way or the other with one of the, with the town budget or whatever that's a that's a question that the selectmen will have to answer so, I, so when they put it out how, i just wanted to just mention though that the purpose of bringing this matter um before the board of selectmen to the board of finance now is to actually introduce it before the budget season just so that as the budget season goes forward and someone says well hey you know maybe we want to use reserve funds for this purpose or that purpose mm -hmm. it's just for everyone yeah. to notice that there actually is uh, another discussion issue. going on about how those yeah. could be but personally i think that this whole discussion should um have it either a special session of the Board of Finance or next month so we have two three good hours so we don't start <coughs> going through a detailed <coughs> overhaul at 9 30 10 o'clock at night yeah. um, I would I think it deserves I, I just to be clear I'm 100% in favor of this but <coughs> it deserves a nice walk through Agreed. not at 9 30 10 in the evening it deserves two or three the solid hours all, all of its own so everybody can get ready, read it, prepare questions, bring back Mr. Yuma, if he'll be kind enough to do that, and, and really have some time to at least get the Board of Finance yeah, and we're, 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 in, 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 in sync with you guys. Are, are we going to no, just want to introduce it? Yeah. Because again, I have a new right, board. So tonight's introductory. Right, and Fine. this is going to be an ongoing discussion. You know, I want you guys to all understand this, which is why we actually went right. through it. You but, saw right. the physical interest. Yes, and that was very helpful. I, 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 think, I really the, think depressing, Alan, but helpful. Alan's point is fine because I, this is so important, and I don't think it can be delayed, and it, it's got to right. you got to start wrapping up the I decision. I still want to conflate it with the budget process. Right. But, yeah, that's no. why I, I think we should have that in the next few November, weeks. November, December. No, November will be fine, but it, even if it's a special meeting, uh, and it, if there's too much on the November agenda, mm -hmm. it's worth it because of the importance of the decision. And I, I agree, when you start trying to keep up on detail, particularly some of this communication cost in detail, I, yeah. I'm not going to be very good at this at 10, 10, 30. Yeah. No, this, I agree entirely. We, and, and we have experts who are going to come in and explain why we get there. Yeah. Okay. I, I agree with you 100%. So what I wanted to do was, at the point, and this was at the point where we finalized all the decision, all the key sort of decisions about how to get this yeah. into the slimmest package possible, but how to make it the most right. efficient and the, the okay. most timely. Because all the synergies I'm talking about, you know, again, we, we've got people who are waiting the sidelines. I can't, I don't, and then if okay. we don't, if we push it back too far, if you, we're into if, holiday season, okay. then we're into budget okay. season. Okay. No, no, I, I just want to have a I, I just want to say that I'm strongly in favor of having this more coincident with the budget process. Okay. I mean, if, if we're going to see a revaluation that's going to cause a 10% increase in the mill rate, that should be a factor that we all think about as we think about the risk that we have to handle with respect to this. If, if the budget process coming out of the state that we'll know more about as we go through the budget process is going to give a big lump to us that we have to absorb, that's something that's helpful to know and for the townspeople to know as they but, vote but, but on, how are we going to know when are we going to know we're, we're never going to know when we're going to know happen. we're going to know, know about the we're going to know about the revaluation and is the revaluation know. over no no, no. no. Okay, okay now when i saw Jennifer, my form they said it would be done by october uh field work field maybe work by october but the, we're going to find the revaluation results in several months from now oh i see several months like, i want to say i want to say maybe december 
I mean, what, what is it statistical or on site? On site. So everyone's getting a visit? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm surprised they have, I haven't heard from them. No, because I handed in like a survey, a, a, a form, and told them what had changed in my house. There, I think, my understanding, there was a bit bifurcated where they did statistical, unless there were changes where they wanted to. So I don't know. I'm not going to. Can, can we just be sensitive to everybody's time yeah. here? Okay, so we're going to. So I'm going to. Correct, correct. There's a lot of people here from fire, EMS, and police. If we're going to do this in a, another earlier session we should make that determination so everyone doesn't have to wait around until 10 o'clock at night if, that, if yeah, that's a general consensus enough. of the board of selectmen and the board of finance i want to be respectful for you i understand it's late I, I, are you all comfortable with that i mean it's you, you know, want to hear brian talk you want to go home <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we need brian we wants need, to go home i guess we actually thought you'd get to this sooner yeah uh, honestly the, here's the problem we have we have multiple topics and that's why I think this deserves a, a, a dedicated I was meeting multiple meetings or, de or, or, mo or you know one or two more meetings but but the problem is if we have four or five things to get through and then you hit this one it's it's you were two and a half hours into the meeting already it doesn't work so that's why I think a special meeting would help well, if, that, if that's the general consensus, yes. Let's yes. Think that's fine. Does everyone agree to a special meeting so we don't get jammed up with the rest with of our agenda? With only one item on the agenda. With only this. That's fine. Right, and I'll, I'd be happy to have it. With Put this, Steve, 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 can yeah. I ask you a question? Okay. Steve, sure. yes. do we know if next month's meeting agenda already has significant stuff on it? The can it be board. next month's meeting agenda? Town and Is there anything that yeah. can't be kicked to December that you were otherwise going to do in November so we can make our next monthly meeting a dedicated session it to this be project? The, it would be the well, Rome's, with the Rome's plan, you could do a financial forecast. We actually have one substantially right. prepared for it. We'll, we'll all have different issues. Rome's got his. He can address that. He can tell you to get ready offline. Yeah. Again, I guess to be clear, my goal is to make you guys as informed okay, so, okay, and I got transparent as possible. I got it. I got it. So why don't we have a special meeting? Let's do it right after the election, so we have an idea of what it's Thursday, the legislature is going to look like. Thursday the eighth, which is your regular meeting. Yeah, I mean, that, that is, is oh, it'll be a regular meeting. That is our regular meeting. That's right. But let's yeah. not let's not do the agenda. We'll right. Let's make this the sole agenda, agenda and kick everything so, over to December, I'm unless it's a there. red, yeah. blaring yeah. emergency. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do fine. That. Good. Okay. I, I would like to apologize for everyone. Um, Steve, there's minutes, and I have a comment on the minutes. Okay, please. Before we go, you have a comment on the believe it or not. I, I don't. Okay, so. Um, hang on. All right, let me get a motion on the table, and then you can change it. Okay, fine. Uh, what did you just say? Uh, our friends from the board of ed, please stay. <laughs> the comment relates to you. Huh? No. Oh, we can do the roofs. The roofs we'll do next month. Sure. Oh God! No, no, no! Don't confuse me. Don't okay, talk to them. Huh? I know. I want to make a comment. We had a, we had stated at the last meeting, Bill. Sorry, this is for you. So the minutes of the last meeting. I want to be clear. Mr. Ruiz mentioned he identified. This is related to the 35. Mr. Ruiz mentioned he identified 10 grand of savings on the town side. The board of Yed has to come has yet to come forth with their report. Mr. Grabber requested the board of Ed present such a report at the board's next meeting, which is this. So we're still on this point. We still don't have resolution on it. We had emails back and forth from Dick and myself during this last month. This isn't going away. You need to tell us what you're going to do. Okay, next month, thank you. So next month, I want, I, I just gotta end. Okay, I got it. Right. Well, we better not get it before, <coughs> before we adjourn the meeting, this, uh, this is Bob Ferguson's last meeting as a member of the uh, Western Board of Finance, and I think we uh, all so, of our thanks. Thank you, Bob. Thank Are you, you still Bob. there?
Bob? He's still there? Bob? No, he's gone. No, he's Bob, you're still there? All right. Yeah, we can. We hear you. Yeah, well. Bob? Uh, it's been a pleasure touring with all of you. And uh, if you're ever out in uh, Yellowstone, let me know. Just uh, right in my backyard. Okay, we will. Bob, you have to let us know where you are, though. We don't have a forwarding address or email. <laughs> yeah, I'm in, uh, in Cody, Wyoming. Okay, well, send us a note as to where you are. We, we, I actually want to get out there. Okay. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Let's, uh, say, let's approve the minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I let's approve the minutes. <laughs> okay, good. All right, all right, we have a motion to approve. Just, just, sorry. Just, go ahead, Alan. Alan, Alan move, move to approve the meetings of the minutes of the September 4th, 2018 meeting as submitted. All Seconded. Those, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion to adjourn? So hey, move. Okay. Hey, Ferguson.